Hey everybody, Ron Ray here, and I love tanky builds. But you know what could be even better? Builds that can stack tankiness and damage at the same time. So in this video, I want to showcase my version of Touch of Death Spirit Board, Immortal Poison Tank. The build can reach more than 34k of life, and potentially the same number of barrier, making it practically unkillable. All of that while dealing tons of damage with satisfying poison explosions. And those explosions can reach up to two and a half trillions of damage, which is a very big number. It can also push speed pretty easily, reaching up to 130 plus speed completion and speed farming P115 to 120 with a decent gear. It also can have a few different versions and you can pretty much change it to fit your needs. Check out the timestamps in the video for all particular questions and let's go forward. So how the build works? Currently we are using the basic tag that is used in almost all spirit bomb builds right now. It's Road of Kipeliki together with Ring of Midnight Sun. Road of Kipeliki is wasting all our vigor when we are using our core skill to get automatic critical strike and additional critical strike damage. And Ring of Midnight Sun is giving us back 50% of the vigor we spent in the last 2 seconds when we are critically striking. Since we are critically striking every time when we are hitting, we are receiving our vigor back every time as well, and that's just a never-ending process. To reach that never-ending process, we need to stack additional resource regeneration in our Pergon board and a little on our items, so 50% of the vigor will be raised closer to 100%. We can also stack health and use health as our damage source, and that's one of the strongest parts of the build. Since Vicious Shield passive right now is bugged, it's giving bonus damage based not of our maximum life, but compared to our basic life. It pretty much leads to a situation when we have more life and we have more barrier too compared to our small basic life. So just stacking life and receiving bigger barrier helps a lot. To pretty much reach crazy amount of life, we are using a very cool passive, Resilient. And Resilient is a passive that gives us casting gorilla skill grants at least 5% per level increased maximum life. We can reach up to 70% of additional maximum life that way and stacking life helps us significantly. That way we can reach up to 32,000 of life or maybe even a little more and 32,000 of barrier as well. So Vicious Shield is going to give us tremendous amount of damage. And that's probably the best way currently to stack the damage. So to keep our barrier up, we're pretty much using the runes. And just Invoke Druid, Earth and Bulwark is pretty much the best rune currently. We can also use it together with the rune that requires spend our maximum resource, because we're always spending the resource and that leads to the Bulwark always being up. To pretty much ensure that barrier is always full, we are going to use some gems for barrier generation and we can also use concussive stone because it can provide up to 30% of additional barrier. All of that together will pretty much max out our barrier and vicious shield is going to provide maximum amount of damage to us. Together with it we can also use a resolve stacks. So, Aspect of Interdiction give us additional block chance per resolve stack and we can roll resolve, for example, on the amulet, leading up to 17 stacks of resolve. And we can use Aspect of Redirected Force, which is going to increase our critical strike damage. All the techniques together are working just perfectly with Touch of Death itself. Because Touch of Death is pretty much a potency skill, but with Poise Touch of Death passive, you're going to make it core skill, and Kipeliki is going to make it basic skill as well. That way our Touch of Death will be potency, basic and core at the same time. And that way we can stack significantly more damage bonuses. So the key to damage is pretty much stack as many plus to resilient passive bonuses as possible. So perfectly we need to roll them on our pants, additionally on our helmet, 
and on our body armor too. However, as a body armor, we can also utilize Shroud of False Death, because it can provide a lot of additional life and plus one to all passives, which is going to increase our damage significantly, because we utilize so many different passives, since our main skill Touch of Death is potency, basic and core at the same time, as I already mentioned. And maximum resolve stacks are also going to help. And as a cherry on top, we are going to use Jaguar bonuses in the Spirit Hole, because that way we will be able to deal additional damage with our main Jaguar bonus and get Ferocity, which is going to increase our attack speed. And since our skill is basically free, more attack speed leads us to significantly more damage. So cooldown management and pretty much getting constantly unstoppable is very important for all Spiritborn builds. And in that build we have a lot of uptime for our unstoppable, mostly because our passive Prodigy Tempo is going to give us crazy amount of cooldown reduction. Constantly spamming our abilities is pretty much going to lower the cooldown of almost all our skills. That way we can constantly spam Armored Height, which is going to give us some percentage of unstoppable. But also we have one point into initiative, so every time when we are casting ultimate we are still receiving 2 seconds of unstoppable again. So just rotating ultimate and armor height is pretty much giving us crazy uptime of unstoppable. And Prodigy Tempo itself is giving us very high uptime of the rest of the skills too. So another great question is where our tanking is coming from. The main source of our tankiness is pretty much crazy amount of life and barrier. Since we constantly reset that barrier, we should always have it up. Due to our mercenary work, we can also get some amount of fortify and it can help us to survive better. Another important part is reaching maximum resistances and maximum armor. So I usually stand around 800-900 armor and pretty much to cap it for pit push, I recommend to just use an incense, because incense can give you 200 armor, which is a very great bonus and it can make you significantly tankier. I'm still rolling percentage of armor on the amulet, that could be repicked while losing some survivability and getting more damage, however I still would go with such option, because I think surviving is better than pretty much being a glass cannon, especially considering we are kind of a melee build. To reach resistances, we are pretty much using a very nice combination because uh, we can get different gems in our jewelry for cold resistance and for shadow resistance. Poison resistance, on the other hand, can come from anti-venom passive and from our paragon bonuses. So for example, we are taking grounded and grounded itself can provide a decent amount of poison resistance. We can also take a little here. All of that together making our resistances almost capped in almost all situations, and when we are using incense, those should be pretty much capped. So if you are not using Shroud of False Death, and you are using normal chest instead, you can pretty much roll 20% of resistances on that chest. It's going to make maxing resistances even easier. So in that case, you will have no issue at all, and you can even drop some paragon changes, or other resistances bonuses. So why we are using Concussion Stump? Genuinely Concussion Stump is a very good ability, because we can constantly spam it and we can reset cooldown very very fast. It's a guerrilla skill, so as a guerrilla skill we pretty much need to use it to get reset a resilient buff. And not just a resilient buff, it's also going to help us significantly to maintain our barrier. Because without concussion stop, it will be significantly harder to get maximum amount of barrier while we are fighting. But concussion storm can grant us 30% uh, of barrier every time when we are hitting enemies, and it helps a lot. It also can give us a chance to dodge next three attacks from an enemy, and it's helping a lot at the boss. So as an alternative, if you don't like concussion stop, you can run scorch. Scorch is going to increase your damage with enhanced Scorch, and that way you will deal more damage against crowd control enemies, which is a pretty strong bonus. So both those options are valid, and you can pick the one that you like the most. However, I prefer Concussion Storm, because it gives more stability into the fights, and we have a lot of damage already. 
Talking about the movement speed, as you probably noticed, I'm not really running additional movement speed on the boots. So, to be faster, while you are speed farming, I recommend to just use a swap boots like that. As you can see, they can give up to 41% of movement speed and 11 additional bonus. So they're running significantly faster, as you can see, and they're running even faster after they are evading. Because the bonus here is evade around 125% movement speed. So those bonuses are working very good. So I recommend to swap it, because you don't really need resistances for speed farming. But for the push, I still recommend to go with resistances, and if you can get some GA for life, it will be even better. Also, maximum away charges are probably the best option as well. So talking about additional buffs, pretty much the best potion for you is Elixir of Fortitude, because it's going to give you maximum life, and life is both durability and damage. As an incense, I recommend to go with one with maximum life too, additional like Scrolls of War, and Song of the Mountain for armors, so three of them. Another good question is why Shroud of Falls Dust is such a good item. So first and the most part is pretty much how much health you can get on your Shroud. As you can see, even without G, it can give up to 1760 maximum life if you will buff it appropriately. It also gives a lot of all stats and fixing some of our stat issues. And plus to one or uh, plus one to all passives is absolutely amazing. It's going to give us a lot of additional damage because we are utilizing so many passives at the same time. So that's making Shroud of Falls that's absolutely best item, and I recommend to get it if you have such opportunity. However, if you don't, just use a normal legendary chest with aspect of binding wars, for example, and such bonuses as dexterity and maximum life. You can also get resilient here, so you're not going to lose a lot of life. So, to start playing that build, you will need at least Road of Kipeliki and the Ring of Midnight Sun around 50%. Make sure that your Ring of Midnight Sun should be ar around like 47 or 50%. You will also need to run at least some resource generation on your other items. I recommend to just roll a ring for it because that's probably the best idea. So when you have a ring of the Midnight Sun and Kipeliki together with a uh, resource generation on your ring, I think you're ready to go and play it. So perfectly, if you can get GA, for Road of Kipeliki you need to get maximum resource, and for Ring of Midnight Sun just dexterity would work fine. So talking about our own setup, first off we are using Poke and Q, that way when we are spending our maximum resource we are getting Earth and Bulwark. It's pretty much here just to keep constant barrier on our character, and we are spending resource all the time. Second rune set is pretty much Xol and Xal. That way, when we are invoking skill from another class, such as Bulwark, for example, we are getting additional maximum life. It's going to boost our damage and survivability at the same time. Moving on to the aspects, at the amulet we are using Satibel, which is pretty much obvious. At the ring we are using Redirected Force, because we are still getting Resolve stacks and Block. On our pants, we are going for Interdiction, because it's going to give us 10% of block chance at least per Resolve stack. At the boost, I prefer to go for Dualist Aspect, because it's going to give us more Ferocity, and since we are using Spirit Call for Jaguar, it's working very good with the belt. At the helmet, Binding Moras, in my opinion, is just best, because that way we are constantly going to slow enemies around us and going to deal additional damage to them. And at the gloves, aspect of the Moonrise is working just fine because it's giving us more attack speed and more damage, since our skill is pretty much basic skill as well. So talking about our skills, our setup very basic. So here we just need to progress, we are taking basic self-explanatory stuff to boost our damage. Uh, unrestrained power is good because we have a lot of unstoppable bonuses. And uh, you can also stack Apex and Focal Point, and if you will need additional points anywhere, you can pretty much draw points from Focal Point. A Ravager is very important, and uh, Measured Ravager especially, because it's going to stack together with our Kipeliki and the Ring of Midnight Sun. So that passive here is boosting us heavily. Uh, I'm also recommending to take Measured Vortex, because that way we are going to knock enemies down. 
when we are casting Vortex, and it's going to give us additional crowd control effect. I'm not taking Reinforced Armor Hide because I think we're already tanky enough. But can Cassive Storm together with Uncanced Can Cassive Storm is very important to maintain our barrier here. If you're not using Shroud, you will need to invest one point into Antivenom. To get that point, you can drop it from Focal Point, for example. Moving forward, Resilient is very important, so invest all your points here. And you will need to reach at least level 10 for a lot of bonus health. As you can see right now I have 14 and it's working just fine. So Vehemence is very good for our damage, together with bonuses such as Potent and Furnace, because all our skills are Jaguar skills. Touch of Death should be buffed as high as possible up to level 17, because it's going to give us a lot of additional damage. And Poise Touch of Death is the most important passive here, because it's going to make our Touch of Death a core skill. Moving forward, all those are pretty much self-explanatory, we're just getting them for the damage. However, I'm not getting Exalted Hunter, because I think it's not worth the point, we already have a lot of cooldown reduction. And here is the source of our cooldown reduction, it's pretty much Prodigy Tempo. It's going to give us a lot of ranks for our skills, and pretty much better cooldowns too. I think it's the currently best passive that we can get. So, focusing on our Paragon. The first glyph is faster, I think it's working very good because it's giving us centipede damage together with damage against crown control enemies and poison damage. We also can just stack uh, dexterity around. I recommend to take only life and not to go for armor because we already have capped armor. Next board is pretty much Vika's shield. Vika's shield is very important because that's the main source of our damage. Get it as early as possible because it's going to give you a lot of damage and make your character significantly stronger. The glyph here is Spirit. Spirit is here just to get us additional critical strike damage and nice additional bonuses. The next board is to the left and that's Convergence. We are not really getting a lot of damage from it, but it's still worth to take. Because we don't have a lot of alternatives. Glyph here is Bane because we are doing a lot of poison damage and it can give us nice chance to deal double damage with poison as well. Moving to uh, up, we can get Sapin next. Sapin is working very nice because we are constantly spamming the same skills. And it giving us a lot of additional damage, 30%, that's definitely a lot. The glyph here is Kenny because Kenny is just second with our poison damage. It's not the best, but still working pretty fine. Getting maximum resource here is pretty important, and if you don't have Shroud, you can get both points to resource generation here. And moving to the right, the last board is pretty much Revelin. Revelin itself is worth it because we are constantly knocking down enemies just by itself, and we have additional damage to crowd control enemies too. So I think it's definitely worth the points. We can also get additional life in here, which is absolutely best for the build. And the glyph here is Colossal. Colossal is pretty much just giving us additional bonus. We're not really using Guerrilla skills in that setup, so just additional bonus is worth it if you can get only 27 SR around. And you don't need to stack more than that, and instead you can pretty much invest into attack speed or any other bonuses. I also recommend to go through the middle of the line if you have enough points, because Grounded is a very great bonus because it can give us poison resistance. However, if you don't have enough points to go like that, you can just go by that line. From Fearless to just up, here and to the right. It will save you some points and you will lose some poison resistance. So that was my Touch of Death Poison Tank build. I think it's a very cool build right now to play and push with. So after the nerf of Evade, I think this is a build that I currently prefer, but I still will be happy to work on a few interesting builds in the future. Thank you all much for watching, and see you next time, around the round.